Back here in Colorado, the person accused of killing five people at an LGBTQ club in Colorado Springs is due in court today. Yeah, we'll get an update on the investigation in just a couple of minutes. But first, we want to focus on learning more about the people killed. Over the days, we have been learning more about these, uh, these people through the memories of friends who knew them best. She made me feel like, don't worry about anyone else's opinion. It's okay. You're not doing anything wrong by being who you are. She's talking about Kelly Loving, says she was a trans mother to others who were transitioning. Kelly was killed at Club Q. Nine News reporter Angeline McCall spoke with a close friend of hers who says that Kelly helped shape her into the woman she is today. During Kelly Loving's final minutes at Club Q, she was FaceTiming with her longtime friend, Natalie Skye Bingham. She was showing me her outfit in the bathroom at Club Q. And then she was saying that she wanted to go grab a drink. She promised she would call back. And when the phone call ended at 11.53, I never heard back from her. Three minutes later is when police say the shooter started firing. And the next day, Natalie got a call she hoped she wouldn't get. And I was like, don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me it's true. Don't tell me she was one of them. Natalie lost not just a friend, but someone who helped guide her for the seven years they knew each other. I will cherish Kelly as my trans mother for teaching me to stay confident and to stay truthful to who I am. She was fearless. She was a welcoming person. She would give you the shirt off her back if you were asking for it or the last dollar to her name, she would give it to you. She would give anything and everything to anyone. In the moment they said goodbye, Natalie didn't know it would be the last. It's so crazy because you never know when your last day is. And the last words I told her were, be safe, I love you. Natalie says she was at Pulse nightclub in Orlando the night the shooting happened there. She did leave before the shooting. She says she lost five friends that night. The Colorado Healing Fund is already starting to help the victims, families, and survivors of the Club Q shooting. The nonprofit sent out $50,000 for victims advocates to use to pay for memorial services, medical expenses, and travel costs for family members. The fund will also support the broader community affected by the tragedy. It will work with LGBTQ organizations to support their needs. If you want to donate, you can scan that QR code on your screen right now. We also have the information up on our website, 9news.com. So far, nine news viewers like you have raised more than 75 thousand dollars to help and two hundred and sixty three thousand dollars has been raised in total so far this morning the suspect in this shooting is expected to make their first court appearance and according to new court documents defense attorneys say the suspect is non-binary and uses the they them pronouns so that's also how we will refer to uh, to them going on. Darius Johnson live in Colorado Springs this morning. And Darius, uh, it is uh, we're starting to hear from some people who knew the suspect. Yeah, we had a chance to speak with a friend of the suspect who says that he knew the suspect was hateful, but he never really expected this. We also had a chance to speak with a former homeowner who about an incident last year involving the suspect as well as their family. Leslie Bowman says she rented a home to the suspect's mother, and in June of 2021, the suspect was living with her grandparents when they got into a fight and went to their mom's place. According to the El Paso County Sheriff's Office, the suspect then threatened to hurt their mom with home made weapons and bombs. Deputies arrested the suspect on multiple felonies and prosecutors ultimately decided not to pursue those charges. Now Bowman says she's furious. Sunday morning when I found out what he had done, it really made me angry and upset that, you know, after the seriousness of the charges that were brought against him from last year, that there wasn't some sort of follow through. Now, right now, the suspect is in the custody of the El Paso County Sheriff's Office. We don't know yet if he's still in the hospital or if he's in jail. They are expected to have their first court appearance later on this morning per a video conference hearing. While formal charges are pending, we do know at this time the suspect is facing 10 counts of first degree murder as well as bias motivated crimes as well, Gary.
You don't uh, happen to know what time that court hearing is today, do you? At last check, we were hearing that the court appearance will be around 11 o'clock, um, 1130 rather this afternoon. Of course, we'll keep you all updated both on air and online. We also have a crew that's coming in a little bit early to be able to get down here and be present for that. All right, Darius, thanks for the update. Appreciate it. The suspected shooter walked into Club Q with two guns. Now multiple sources are telling our nine wants to know team those guns did not have serial numbers. They are known as ghost guns. Those kinds of guns are not made by traditional manufacturers. Law enforcement experts say that it could make it a lot harder for investigators to track the suspect weapons because there aren't any serial numbers. The guns are nearly impossible to trace back. Earlier this year, President Biden announced some new rules aimed at cracking down on ghost guns, but it is still legal to make a gun for personal use. And so far, we haven't found anything to suggest that the suspected shooter was banned from having guns under the state's red flag law. Despite the shooting, LGBTQ events are still happening in Colorado. That includes drag story hour events at public libraries, which have drawn criticism and even threats in the past. On Monday, more than 100 people came together at the Boulder Public Library. Library leaders say they hold the event twice a year and the events are typically well received. But in the wake of the Club Q shooting, the library checked in with Boulder police about event safety. They also enlisted the help of the Parasol Patrol. It's a volunteer group that uses umbrellas to shield LGBTQ friendly events from potential protesters. Ultimately, library leaders say the event is too important to the community to stop now. We're looking for events that really include everybody, that are really inclusive to everyone. And that's part of the reason why we do it is because it's a family friendly event and it shows kids that they can be whoever they want. The library says it didn't end up having any security issues and they plan to continue with another event already set for next summer.